The large-scale cryogenic orbit refueling has never been done before, but it will be demonstrated for the first time by SpaceX next year. Can you believe it? Elon Musk has indeed recently revealed this. Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. How did Elon Musk reveal the Starship propellant transfer plan? Has it undergone any significant changes compared to before? As part of his 45-minute speech, Musk revealed the timeline for a hugely significant plan regarding Starship space travel, which is the propellant transfer. The next year, we're aiming to demonstrate ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer. Well, this is indeed interesting. Everything's happening quite swiftly and neatly. Despite the Starship explosions, Elon remains very confident in what he says. He even jokes about it as if it's not a challenging matter for SpaceX. It's, it's hard to make this not look a little bit naughty, uh, <laughs> because it's two ships connecting and doing a fluid transfer. It's just what it is. The propellant transfer process will involve a series of tanker starships launched by SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster rockets rendezvousing with other starships in Earth's orbit. These tanker vehicles will carry an abundant supply of cryogenic propellants, such as liquid oxygen and liquid methane, which will be transferred to the Starship through carefully coordinated docking and rehearsal procedures. The fueling process will utilize advanced cryogenic fluid management systems to ensure the propellant remains stable and in liquid form throughout transportation. Specialized coupling and fluid connection assemblies will enable the safe and efficient transfer of propellant between the tanker vehicles and the Starship. Above all, Elon brings us great joy when he asserts that You'll need about, about five or six uh, refilling missions for every one mission that goes to Mars. This is unbelievable. Surely you remember at the end of last year, NASA continuously expressed concerns about the number of refilling missions for Starships for a lunar trip. They predicted up to 20 launches for Starship for each trip to the moon. However, Elon disagreed with this, stating that even 16 launches could be extremely unlikely in a social media post in August of 2021. He mentioned that it would take a maximum of eight tanker launches to supply fuel to the Starship lander, and perhaps only four launches would be necessary. Even now, despite others' concerns, Elon Musk remains steadfast with the figures he presented. Furthermore, as the refueling process unfolds, SpaceX has developed an extended version of Starship, allowing for expanded fuel tank capacity. This further proves that the possibility of only five to six refueling missions to Mars is achievable, and the number of missions required to reach the moon may be even fewer than what Elon Musk previously declared. So, what is the actual principle behind SpaceX's ship-to-ship -ship refueling? We'll have two options that SpaceX could use for in-space refueling. In orbit, due to microgravity, the propellant inside a spacecraft tank becomes detached from the structure. When the spacecraft applies thrust, the propellant remains stationary until it hits the tank walls. This is based on the Newtonian principle that an object at rest tends to stay at rest. This has opened up the first method of refueling, which is also the most advantageous method. If a spacecraft thrusts in one direction while opening a hatch or valve on the tank in the opposite direction of that thrust, the propellant inside will naturally escape through the opening as it tries to remain at rest. Therefore, when a spacecraft docks with a tanker for refueling and their tanks are connected and opened, if the tanker accelerates away from the receiving ship, the propellant in the tanker's tanks will effectively be transferred to the second ship as it tries to maintain its stationary state. Next, the key question is how much acceleration is needed for the process and how costly maintaining that continued acceleration becomes. According to Cutler et al.'s 2006 paper, a famous paper that many believe is the simplest path to transferring propellant to a large-scale orbit. The answer is surprising. If a spacecraft pair weighing 100 metric tons accelerates at one ten thousandth of Earth's gravity to transfer a propellant, they would only need to consume 45 kilograms or 100 pounds of hydrogen and oxygen propellant per hour to sustain that acceleration. In the most extreme hypothetical refueling scenario, where a fully loaded tanker refuels a ship with a full cargo bay, two dock starships would weigh closer to 1,600 tons or 3.5 million pounds. The milli-g acceleration that SpaceX has often referred to in the past would be more than 10 times greater than the maximum acceleration analyzed by Cutter et al. However, according to the paper, the propellant cost scales linearly with both the required acceleration and the mass of the system. Roughly speaking, using the same assumptions, 
This means that the thrusting Starship would theoretically consume over just seven tons, half a percent of its methane and oxygen propellant per hour to maintain milli-g acceleration. With large enough pipes, around 20 to 50 centimeters or 8 to 20 inches, connecting each Starship tank, SpaceX should have no trouble transferring 1,000 plus tons of propellant in a few hours. Even at the scale of Starship, it should incur a performance tax of no more than 20 to 50 tons of propellant per refueling. All transfers leading up to the worst-case 1,600-ton scenario should also be substantially more efficient. It'd be surprisingly efficient, with perhaps 80% or more of the launch propellant remaining reusable by the end of the process. Besides this refueling method, there are also many other opinions suggesting that SpaceX could use pumps to transfer fuel from one ship to another. It sounds straightforward, but this approach would pose more significant challenges that need to be addressed. According to many opinions, if pumps are used, it would be difficult to ensure that the pump is submerged in the liquid in a weightless state when it's turned on. This might sound mundane regarding Earth's gravitational pull, but it's a technically challenging issue in the vacuum and microgravity of space. Solutions for this issue exist for engine restarts, but it's unknown whether those solutions can be directly applied to the fuel transfer problem. However, to know exactly how SpaceX will tackle this task, we still need to wait for some time until SpaceX achieves its previously set goals such as successfully landing Starship with the Mechazilla arm. Only then can more information about the fuel transfer process be revealed. But don't worry too much about this issue, because only space-based refueling can help SpaceX establish a presence on the moon and conquer Mars. Elon asserted this in his speech. This is, this is actually a very important, uh, this is a very important step on going to Mars. Musk's goal is to see a civilization on Mars, the first step of humanity becoming a multi-planetary species. He believes Mars will need a population of around 1 million people, with millions of tons of supplies for settlers to mine, build, and develop everything on Mars to be self-sustaining. This will require a fleet of starships launching at a staggering rate, 10 times a day, ferrying hundreds of vehicles to Mars during the short travel window that opens every 26 months between Earth and the Red Planet. Ultimately, this is a very daunting challenge, but Musk believes humans can make a fixer-upper planet like Mars. Your buy-in to this vision surely depends on your goodwill towards Elon and the sense of difficulty in forming habitable communities on an inhospitable world like Mars. The technical challenges are extraordinary, but people have underestimated SpaceX for years. Overall, the company's talent and employees have delivered on what Musk has promised, so why stop now? Eight years ago, when Musk first outlined his Mars plan, it was bold, crazy, and dazzling. And I still think all three adjectives apply. If anything, the vision's even bolder now, but as of today, with SpaceX demonstrating that rocket reusability is very feasible and with a bustling Starship factory at hand, they seem a little bit less crazy. We can do this, Musk told his employees. And I'm not sure he's wrong. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.